When it comes to towing, seeing is believing. That's why Chevy Truck's advanced camera technology offers up to eight available cameras for 14 unique views, so you can focus on the view that really matters. Chevrolet, together let's drive. Learn more about Chevy Trucks at Chevy.com. Safety or driver assistance features are no substitute for the driver's responsibility to operate the vehicle in a safe manner. Read the vehicle owner's manual for important feature limitations and information. Welcome into 49ers Access. My name is Sterling Bennett, and today is going to be a little different show. Yes, we're going to talk about Brandon Ayuk. Yes, we're going to talk about mystery teams, but mainly this show is going to be about discussing the rumor mill. What is out there that could be a possibility? What's out there that could make sense? It's not going to be us discussing actual reports from Adam Schefter or ESPN or Mike Garofolo. It's simply going to be, let's just talk about what's going on with Brandon Ayuk. Could there be a three-team trade? Well, which receivers could feasibly replace Brandon Ayuk? Because right now it seems like everything has gone radio silence. There's quote-unquote minor updates happening, which aren't really updates at all. It's Adam Schefter and the insiders saying the same thing over and over again, where a couple days ago, it felt like a deal was done. A deal was going to be done, or at least was on the cusp of being finalized. Now it feels like we're just waiting to see what actually transpires between the San Francisco 49ers and Brandon Ayuk. Now, I still believe the most likely outcome is he gets traded. But as we have moved away from a deal is done reports or a deal is finalized or there's frameworks of deals that have been agreed upon, every passing day, it feels like it's more likely the odds increase of Brandon Ayuk remaining a San Francisco 49er. But within that has been a lot of conversation of, you know, could there be a three-team trade? Is there a mystery trade partner, Devontae Adams? You know, and and so many rumors out there. And so today is going to be basically us looking at every single rumor, what I think could be true, what I think is actually false. But also, what if? If this was a Disney Plus TV show, a streaming show, It would be called Brandon Ayuk, what if, or 49ers, what if. So before we dive in, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave that view on the audio platforms, and don't forget to use our promo code 49ersaccess at SeatGeek.com. But let's talk about what's happening with Brandon Ayuk. Bobo, I see you. I think it's Raul. If it's not, it's Raul. And Tony, I see you as well. John, I see you in the comments. Uh, Thank you guys for watching and listening. Uh, But let's dive into the rumor mill because there are so many things going on. Everybody has a source. And I'll be the first one to admit, I've heard some things. Some things I believe. Some things I vehemently don't believe at all. Some things I think are absurd. And unfortunately, a lot of this, it's really confusing for fans. It's really confusing for myself of what is actually true because you got a dog leading the way (laughs) in a lot of these rumors and reports, which sometimes he's been right, sometimes he's been wrong. And if you have no idea who I'm talking about, you're talking about Pretty Ricky on Twitter. And Pretty Ricky was one of the the accounts early in the offseason that connected San Francisco to the Jaguars at pick 17 and Zay Zay Jones, excuse me. Uh, That didn't happen, but that was on the table for sure. But I think what's going on now is that there's a lot of fluff, a lot of maybe, potential, nothing really concrete. And that's why it's so hard to navigate. And my my consensus from fans I'm getting is they're just tired of it. They want this to end. They want it to be over. And they're just kind of sick of the whole Brandon Ayuk charade, San Francisco not signing him. Will they, won't they? You know, they're tired of sitting on the edge of the, you know, of like, are we going to lose our pro receiver? We're going to keep the guy. So 
The first rumor I want to talk about today is, can the San Francisco 49ers, will the San Francisco 49ers try to acquire or actually trade Brandon Ayuk away, whether it's the Pittsburgh or mystery partner, then go acquire Devontae Adams. The reason why this rumor has sparked up is one, they're very comparable, right? They're very comparable. Adams and Ayuk have been, the way they play the game will be Adams is far better than Ayuk is, had a better career so far, very comparable in play styles, how they play, the system in which they played in, Ayuk could have flourished with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Adams would be phenomenal in San Francisco. But that doesn't happen often. You don't usually upgrade, if you will, at receiver when you trade away your star receiver. Uh, and, and the return you're likely going to get back from whoever else it is, Pittsburgh seems to be the main trade partner in these serious discussions, it's not going to be a first-round pick. It's not going to be, you know, a hall of players. You're not going to get, you know, TJ Watt back. You know, you're, you're not going to get the Alex Highsmiths. You're not going to get the, I think if it's Patrick, you're not going to get enough firepower, ammunition, if you will, to go get Devontae Adams because the Raiders have no reason to trade Devontae Adams. They're a younger team that has a brand new head coach, if you will, in Antonio Pierce, now in his first full season as their head coach. They're not going to trade a star receiver unless they're getting a massive haul back and what San Francisco likely isn't willing to trade a massive haul for Devontae Adams. That said, the reason why this rumor is out there is because yesterday, while on NFL Network, Mike Garofolo turns around and says, Brandon Ayuk's agent is here at Raiders training camp. And... I looked at that as, okay, he's not at Levi's. He's not in Santa Clara. They're not really like about to put pen to paper or they're not really going to say, hey, a deal's done. You're getting shipped to Washington or Pittsburgh. He's in Las Vegas, which is a short flight away, mind you, but he is not where he would need to be to finalize a deal. But people took that as, oh my goodness, San Francisco... They're, they have connection to the Raiders now, and he's trying to work a deal out with Devontae Adams. That's not how this works. <laughs> Ryan Williams, Brandon Ayuk's agent, does not represent Devontae Adams at all. In fact, I believe he represents Thayer Munford. He's likely checking in on the guy he acts represents, not a receiver he has actively no ties to. And it's not like he can facilitate a trade, including Devontae and the Raiders. Now, Ryan Williams could be in Las Vegas talking to the Raiders for Brandon Ayuk, and yes, there could be communication on a trade swapping both those players, but the odds that happen are very, very slim. While I do think San Francisco would take that trade, there would need to be something else involved. And I don't think, because the way... The, with what San Francisco wants from the Steelers. The Raiders are going to want the exact same, if not more, for Devontae Adams. I would assume that San Francisco wants a first-round pick and more from the Steelers. I would assume if there were actually active trade talks between the Raiders and San Francisco involving Devontae and Ayuk, the Raiders would want Ayuk and more from San Francisco to trade Devontae Adams. Because they don't need to move Devontae. And in fact, Devontae's probably a top five receiver, whereas Ayuk's probably a top 10 to 15 receiver. Although ascending and younger, sure, what San Francisco wants from Pittsburgh is going to be exactly what the Raiders want from San Francisco if it comes to acquiring Devontae Adams. Now, again, Ryan Williams, Ayuk agent, can negotiate a contract with the Raiders. They can come to terms of an agreement, but is it realistic that one San Francisco actually acquires Devontae Adams? No. And the reasoning for this is twofold. We already talked about one, right? Devontae Adams is 32 years old this year, a massive contract with the Raiders. Ayuk is 26. He's ascending. Yes, that would be a one-for-one -one great trade for San Francisco, but 
this is of the understanding that, let's say it's a one-for-one -one trade, right? It's the Raiders and San Francisco negotiating. Again, the Raiders are going to want Ayuk and more, whereas San Francisco is going to want Devontae and likely a little bit more. It's two teams holding on to all pro receivers, albeit one much more accomplished than the other, but similar play styles and two teams that don't really need to move them. They have leverage in the contracts over those players, right? They're kind of stuck in the mud of, well, we don't have to do anything. Whereas, let's say it's a three-team deal. Let's say it's which many people were talking about this. San Francisco, which I, ac I actively know this to be true because Mike Garofolo just said this on The Rich Eisen Show, that he has no doubt in his mind the San Francisco 49ers are sifting through the league, trying to find other receivers, knowing they're not going to get back one from Pittsburgh they like. So... San Francisco is actively, if they have to trade Ayuk, trying to fight a th find a third trade partner. Whether it is in the same trade, or it's Ayuk to Pittsburgh in a separate trade, it's acquiring somebody else. The Niners are trying to find another receiver to replace Ayuk they view as equal to, or equal value, or similar to it. But what San Francisco, like... A trade including Pittsburgh and San Francisco and the Raiders, those three teams do not have enough ammunition because the Pittsburgh Steelers don't really have enough ammunition outside of picks to acquire Ayuk. In San Francisco, really, unless they want to part ways with Ayuk in a second or Ayuk in the first round pick, don't have enough ammunition to go acquire Devontae Adams. Well, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so the likelihood is very, very, very thin. Devontae Adams comes to San Francisco, but let's look at this from a three-team trade. Is there a mystery partner out there? We've heard through reports that it's the Steelers and multiple teams. Now, yes, the Browns were involved. They were essentially told no, albeit San Francisco leaks out that they have Amari Cooper on the table. <laughs> that they have a second round pick and Amari Cooper out there. I'm sure they don't like that. So you assume it's Pittsburgh, the Patriots, and then it's the Steelers. And then there have been these rumored mystery teams. Who could these mystery teams be? Now, could it be the Raiders? I doubt it. And Mike Garofolo and Diana Rossini both said today that San Francisco was willing to pivot off of acquiring another receiver if it meant getting another player at a position of value equal to Ayuk at that position. So that could mean acquiring an edge rusher, a safety, a cornerback, a right tackle, whatever it might be. San Francisco is open to acquiring a player at another position if they're equal to value of Brandon Ayuk. What does that mean? Now, Pittsburgh seems reluctant to add in a player like Alex Highsmith, who is arguably one of the best number two edge rushers in football. But what other team could be out there that has either draft picks or a player equal of value? And let's assume in this trade we're talking about and trying to kind of talk through that Ayuk is going to go to the Steelers. What other team could be mixed in in this NBA style trade to help facilitate and get things done? Get things done. Well, the Cardinals don't make sense. They're in the division. They don't really have the talent San Francisco would want. The Falcons. Kirk Cousins is now there. They're a younger team, a new head coach. Likely, and let's be honest here, relatively loaded at receiver, albeit Ron Del Moore is now out for the season. They have Drake London. They have Kyle Pitts and other people there. Um, they now have Kirk Cousins, obviously. The Ravens, they're not going to part ways with somebody. The Bills just traded away Stefan Diggs. That doesn't make sense. They're a young team. They don't want to add new contracts. They already cut half the roster this year to get younger and cheaper. The Panthers, I think, would be a team, but they don't have the talent to acquire an IUC or facilitate that trade. Unless there's a first-round pick involved, but San Francisco is going to look at the Panthers and say, why in the world are you going to trade us a first-round pick for IUC when you're a young team, the ones to rebuild, and you drafted a receiver and... You also got Deontay Johnson, so 
you've already marked off about five teams. The Bears wouldn't be involved in this. They want to compete today, and they already have three star receivers. The Bengals, they're not going to do business with San Francisco. They're not going to do business with San Francisco because the Bengals themselves view T. Higgins as their Brandon Ayuk. Why would let's just you know let's just talk through this again. Let's assume in this three-team trade, and one, it's the Pittsburgh and the Bengals in the same trade. That usually doesn't work. Let's assume it's Ayuk going to the Steelers, let's say for a second-round pick and a conditional third-round pick next year. Let's assume that, right? Ayuk goes to Pittsburgh. Those picks go back to San Francisco, and San Francisco somehow trades those second-round pick and a third-round pick for T. Higgins? The Bengals view T. Higgins to equal value Brandon Ayuk. Well, that doesn't make sense at all. They don't even need another receiver, and they want to pay Jamar Chase. Cleveland, Ayuk already said no to. The Dallas Cowboys in San Francisco, unless you're Trey Lance, you're not doing business with them. Now we get to one of the more interesting teams. We get to one of the more interesting teams. We have a lot of comments here, and I'll get to them in a second, I promise you. Um, let's see. Uh, Bobo says here, getting Devontae Adams here would be nice too. Some big name equal value to Ayuk. I just don't see it happening. Tony Meredith says Ayuk is staying. Every day that passes, that seems like the likely uh, scenario we're going to see play out. John says, I'm not trading him to Pittsburgh for a guard and the worst pass blocking tackle in football. Yeah, the rumored, rumored, you know, the sourcing says it's like Dan Moore and James Daniels. Two offensive linemen. Dan Moore is terrible as a tackle. I'd rather have Jalen Moore and Colton McKivitz. Dan Moore would not play. So you're going to trade Ayuk for a backup guard, a backup tackle, and a backup receiver? That doesn't make sense. John, I'm with you. Kawachipto says, this seems more like they're letting the Steelers do negotiations of a contract and see what they want to match it and getting an appropriate trade just in case. Let's talk about that for a second. It's a great point. And Albert Breer said this today, and I fully agree with him. And, and you just said it too, Kawachipto, that while the trade negotiations are actively happening, things seem like the world is falling and Ayuk's not going to be a Niner. The Niners, I don't want to say sneakily, that's not the word to use, but... The Niners could be using Ayuk's trade request against him. We've talked about San Francisco could, again, just tell Ayuk to pound salt and kind of hold him hostage, if you will, and say, sit there and shut up. And either you're going to play or you're going to hold out and it's only going to hurt you, right? That's one option. This scenario is more of or more in line with San Francisco saying, okay, let's essentially let you go on the free agent market, if you will. Let's see what other teams are actively willing to give you. Reportedly, the Patriots said $32 million a year. Ayuk said no. That makes sense. They're not going to win very soon. It's a new head coach, a uh, rookie quarterback. That makes sense. The timelines don't match up with him. The Steelers apparently are willing to offer around $28 million or around there. Okay, it almost it, it's it's almost like it gives San Francisco a better blueprint as to what Ayuk is looking for. Because let's say San Francisco is currently at a twenty six million dollar per, per year offer, and a team like Pittsburgh is saying we'll give you twenty eight and a half million dollars. San Francisco goes back to the drawing board, goes back to Prague Marate, and John Lynch and says, look. We're only two and a half million dollars off. We can get this thing done. We can figure this thing out. We ain't got to trade this kid. He actively said he wants to be here. We want him here. We're just using this as a ploy to get a better understanding as to what he's willing to take. I completely agree that while, yes, San Francisco could still trade Brandon Ayuk, it's certainly a possibility still, they also could be using this as a as a path to an extension, to renegotiations. Now, that requires two people coming back to the table in which San Francisco apparently hasn't been willing to do for months. But this could be them saying, enough is enough, we're going to trade you, or we're going to at least 
figure out a path to resigning you via seeing what other teams are willing to pay you and what you're willing to accept. John says here that just make him play on the fifth and move on. That's also an option. Again, that's the kind of the sit on your hands, right? That's, that's the go pound salt option of if, if you don't want to play, fine. We'll play without you. That might hurt us, but if you don't play by week nine or 10, you're right back here next year, buddy. So uh, come on, come on now. Um, it really is. While San Francisco does not necessarily have trade leverage with Ayuk, they do have a way to wiggle themselves out of a trade or refuse to make a trade, and it kind of finds them back in a better path, a clearer path to an extension. Uh, Raul says, uh, sign Hunter Renfro. I will admit this, and I'm not proud of it. Last year, when the Raiders signed Jimmy Garoppolo, in my head, I said, the camaraderie and the chemistry he had with Trent Taylor in 2017, could that be reimagined? And could that be refound with Renfro? But Renfro seems like he's, he's banged up now, he's older, and his prime is behind him, so I'll say no. Uh, Bobo says, I uke for DeForest Buckner, straight up. Uh, I don't think the Colts would say yes, nor do I think San Francisco wants to pay two defensive tackles over $20 million a year. Uh, they tried that. They cut one this year uh, in, in the offseason. Uh, Tony Meredith says, pretty Ricky, one, two, three, is Ayuk's agent, or at least he works athletes first. Um, a lot of ties, definitely. A lot of insight he has that I'm not really sure what's going on, but I will say pretty Ricky is not the only person hearing the same things. And... Does that mean they're right? No, not at all. But it means someone is leaking information or someone is saying the same thing to the same people over and over and over again. Um, Niner Media says, hey, Sterling, what's up, Niner Media? What's going on? Um, Bobo says, I uke for Patrick Sertain, which brings this full thing in a big circle. When we left off talking about which teams could make sense for a three-team trade, it was the Dallas Cowboys. The next team on my list is the Denver Broncos. There are rumors out there that the Denver Broncos are not involved in trade talks, not, you know, at the table currently in negotiations with San Francisco, but while it's not for Patrick Sertain, there are a lot of rumors out there stating that the Denver Broncos, who earlier in the offseason were willing to trade Cortland Sutton before they redid his deal. Now, he's still making less than Brandon Ayuk and a lot less, mind you, than Brandon Ayuk. And they've already rejected offers or his trade requests in previous years. So it's not as if they're just going to give him away for free. But the rumor out there, and I've heard this from people that I know, and I'm sure you've seen it too, that the 49ers, again, like I already stated, Mike Garofolo said this earlier today, uh, on the Rich Eisen show that San Francisco is scouring the NFL for teams willing to part ways with a star receiver equal to or close to value that'll fit their system like Brandon Ayuk. Well, the Denver Broncos have a receiver in Cortland Sutton that, while no is not Brandon Ayuk, is a very, very talented receiver that could, really could, bring back a lot of value to the Niners. And I think that it's it's certainly a valid conversation to have because what Cortland Sutton does, it gives you a bigger bodied, deep downfield receiver to help you stretch the field. He's willing to block and he's cheaper. Okay, so let's say Ayuk is adamant of getting out of San Francisco, which I don't think he is. But let's say he is. Let's say for the sake of conversation, Ayuk's like, I'm done. I'm out. I don't want to be here anymore. Trade me. I, I'm holding out. I'm done. I'll take the fines. I'll sit out. Get me out of Santa Clara. They have to trade him to Pittsburgh. This episode is brought to you by our good friends at NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. I'm sure by now you've all gotten back into your Sunday routines, but they could be even better with NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. You get the most live NFL games all in one place, every game, every Sunday. 
and you can even watch up to four different games at once with Multiview, one of my favorite inventions of this decade. It's exactly what you need to catch all the action, make your Sundays more magical, and also, YouTube TV is great. I got it this year. It's awesome. Sign up now at youtube.com slash BS. Device and content restrictions apply. Local and national games on YouTube TV. NFL Sunday ticket for out-of-market games excludes digital-only games. Pittsburgh likely only willing to offer draft picks. Let's say it's a second-round pick and a third-round pick or whatever it might be. A plethora of picks for Ayuk. None in the first round, mind you. San Francisco would then take those picks in a separate trade and go acquire Cortland Sutton. Effectively, replacing Ayuk and probably keeping one pick uh, from Pittsburgh involved, right? So do I love trading Ayuk? No, but I think because you're not going to get Amari Cooper from Cleveland, you're, you're not going to find star receivers out there. The Lions aren't trading with you. The Packers aren't trading with you. The Texans aren't trading with you. The Colts aren't giving you Michael Pittman. The Jaguars definitely aren't trading with you. The Chiefs don't have the receivers. The Chargers are trying to shed contracts and don't really have any receivers as well. The Rams aren't a partner. The Dolphins just signed both their receivers to massive deals. The Vikings aren't giving you Jordan Addison or Jefferson. That's not going to happen. Ayuk already said no to the Patriots. The Saints are a hot mess, and you're not going to get Chris Olave from that team. Uh, the Giants aren't giving you Malik neighbors. The Commanders, although Ayuk would say yes to them, apparently aren't willing to give up the capital for Ayuk San Francisco once in return. Tennessee has nobody. The Buccaneers have Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, but it doesn't feel like they're willing to part ways with them, nor in a, would I really want either one of those players. Evans is great, but doesn't really fit what Ayuk does, and it doesn't make sense to do that. He's also often injured. He ain't trading with Seattle, essentially leaving three teams willing potentially to trade with you. It's the Denver Broncos, the New York Jets, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you're not getting a receiver from the Jets, not at all. The Steelers don't have your trade capital you want or the player you may want, and there's the Broncos. It is of my opinion that there are only three teams San Francisco could strike a realistic deal with unless things go crazy. They get Sutton from the Broncos, that being a player they like. They maybe go acquire Son Reddick from the Jets, but he wants a new deal. He's already holding out, and I would assume San Francisco would want more than Reddick for Ayuk, which makes a lot of sense. Good reasoning for that, and... The Jets just traded for Reddick, so that doesn't make a lot of sense either, but there's a way to make that work for both teams. A lot of ties there. If Reddick won't play for the Jets, then maybe he'll play for San Francisco. Who knows? Then you find your way back to Pittsburgh. The perfect trade, which there is no perfect trades in moving Brandon Ayuk, that is actually realistic and potentially could be on the table, is a three-team trade involving Cortland Sutton, going from the Broncos to San Francisco, Ayuk going from San Francisco to Pittsburgh, and then picks being moved to Denver and San Francisco in return. And many out there are already saying this. Cortland Sutton, ew. Cortland Sutton, he stinks. I've seen it in comments. He's mid. He's not good. He's only 28 years old. It's not like he's this, you know, aging vet. He's not 32 you know, like, um, like Devonte Adams. He's not someone that, you know, you're going to really have to worry about being injured either. He's played over 16 games in the, what, one, two, three, four, five, five of the six years he's played, played 15 games in all but one of them, but one of them. And that year was 2020, which we all know is kind of an outlier year, right? Uh, last year for Denver, Terrible team, terrible quarterback play, 90 targets, 59 receptions, 772 yards and 10 touchdowns. He also will block. He already has ties to San Francisco, meaning he's been connected to us for a long time. He's a massive red zone target. 
He's a bigger body guy being 6'4", 216 pounds. And Tony, I, 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 I see you here in the comments saying he can't separate. With a bigger bodied guy like Sutton, again, while it's not preferred, I don't want to make this move. I'd rather keep Ayuk, and I do think there is a path to doing so. It may be the actually only option out there for you, where you're not going to find what you want from Pittsburgh. Browns are off the table. It, it may be if you have to trade Ayuk, a handful of picks that are unknown. If Ayuk balls out and the Steelers are good this year, they could be in the 20s, maybe. Again, who knows? Quarterback play there is not, not promised to be good by any means, but your only viable option to lose Ayuk and gain something in return could be acquiring Cortland Sutton. Pittsburgh's not giving you Darnell Washington. Pittsburgh's not giving you Pat Frymuth or George Pickens, which Pickens is a yikes too. They're not giving you Troy Fontenot. And I get it. You're trading away a star receiver. San Francisco and the fans have every right to want the other team's best player. But when have you, it rarely ever happens, when have you ever seen one team give away one of their stars for an opposing team's star as well? The point of acquiring Ayuk is to build around him in Pittsburgh. Likely, in the future, around Justin Fields, too. You're not going to trade away your offensive lineman to not protect the quarterback who you want to throw the ball to Brandon Ayuk. They're not going to give you a young tight end. The Pittsburgh Steelers want to maintain young building blocks. Meanwhile, San Francisco wants to keep, or if they're going to trade him away, get other teams' young cornerstone pieces. The Broncos aren't giving a certain. They'd want Ayuk and more. So again, I am very pro keeping Ayuk. I'm very pro thinking that there's a path to re-signing him. And I think every day that passes, you can retain Brandon Ayuk for past this year, past the fifth year option. It's like, and again, Zach Frazier, why would another team give up a young offensive lineman they just drafted and a first round pick for Ayuk? It's justifiable for a young player or for the fans and the team to ask for those things. There's a report out there that the Niners asked for two first round picks from Pittsburgh. Now, I have no idea if that's valid, but it's out there. If that's the case, yeah, it makes sense which they're going to want a King's Ransom for a star. And it's not just Ayuk either. If it was Debo, if it was Mooney Ward, Lenore, if it was Hufunga, if it was Fred Warner, Nick Bosa, Brock Purdy, like, you're going to want the other team's best offer. Pittsburgh's best offer is not going to be enough for you to trade Ayuk away, but it may be enough for San Francisco to trade Ayuk away and flip him for somebody else they might deem good enough along with some of the picks they get from Pittsburgh to make up for Ayuk. Sutton is a good receiver. He's young. He's a deep ball threat. Young as in 28, not 32. And he's just a guy that you can trust. He's Mr. Consistency. Reading his stats, as a rookie, 84 targets, only nine games started, mind you, 84 targets, 42 receptions, 700 plus yards and four touchdowns. Sophomore season, 124 targets, over 1,100 yards, 72 receptions and six touchdowns. Mind you, he's putting these numbers up with bad quarterback play in Denver. 2021, 98 targets, 58 catches, over 750 yards, two touchdowns. 2022, 109 targets, 64 catches, almost 830 yards and two touchdowns. Again, last year, 90 targets, almost 60 receptions, 772 yards and 10 touchdowns. I don't want to trade Ayuk, but if San Francisco is actively forced to trade him away, the best path to getting any value to help you this year on the offensive side of the ball, mainly at receiver, 
mainly at receiver, is Cortland Sutton. Defensive side, maybe it's a linebacker you want. I don't think they'd want a cornerback. I think they'd want, like, if I'm being perfectly honest here, which I should, it's my own show, <laughs> I think I would focus on improving the defense over the offense. I get they're pretty thin at receiver now, which, again, leans into the conversation of why you wouldn't trade Ayuk. Pearsall's injured. You want Jennings being the number two guy on your roster. If Debo goes down, Jennings is your one. Pearsall may be your one. And if it gets really nasty, then it's Cowing and Conley and Trent Taylor and Danny Gray and Ronnie Bell, and you're like, oh my God, we are effed. We are effed. And so ultimately, the rumor mill doesn't make a lot of sense. And we're hearing all this stuff. I'm hearing this stuff. You're hearing this stuff. You can like some of it. You can you can like Cortland Sutton like I do. You can dislike him like obviously Tony does, which is fine. Perfectly fine. But I think Niner fans, compared to two days ago, including myself, should feel like 10 times more comfortable in knowing or feeling that Ayuk is... He might be back here. That if they can just sit down together at the table and say, look, Pittsburgh's going to give you 28 and a half. We'll give you 28 and a half. And you can win here. You can flourish here. He ain't got to, rec- you know, you don't have to relocate your family. He's a Bay Area guy. He lives here in the Bay, right? Like, you want to move all the way across the country to play a football where it rains, it snows, it's cold and. Look, I like Pittsburgh. It's a great culture. It's a good environment to win. They're stable at the top with the head coach. But let's be honest, Brandon. Are you going to win in Pittsburgh? Got to play Cleveland's defense twice a year. Got to play the Browns twice a year. I mean, man. And it's not like, and this is the big kicker, which makes no sense to me. It's not as if San Francisco can't, one, afford to pay Ayuk. Two, does it know they need Ayuk? Because again, Debo, for as great as he is, likely going to get injured for at least one game this year, just the way he plays. Usually doesn't last for a long time. But also, you sign Nick Bosa, you sign Fred Warner, you sign George Kittle, you are going to sign Brock Purdy, you sign Jimmy Garoppolo, you sign Chris McCaffrey, you're going to sign Trent Williams too. Why would you not want to reward a player that's done everything right. So, yes, I do think a mystery team could be Denver. Maybe it's a three-team trade, NBA style, which is so, so rare. Although, yes, it is confirmed San Francisco is sifting through the wide receiver market, asking other teams, would you trade that guy? Are you open to a conversation? No, Denver would not want Ayuk and Sutton in the same trade, it seems like, or, you know, going back for each other, according to Benjamin Albright. But picks get brought up, money gets brought up, players get brought up, who knows. But even then, why would you not reward Brandon Ayuk, who has done everything right? Great player, got better every single year. Fits your system to a T. More than Debo does, albeit Debo is more important to the offense in regards to scoring and play style and scheme. But fits what you want to do. Opens up lanes for Christian McCaffrey on the outside. Go back to the game against the Steelers, funny enough. Who's downfield blocking for him? It's Brandon Ayuk. I get Andy, you want Devontae. If someone can pitch me a trade, a scenario in which Devontae actually is willing to come to San Francisco, and not even that, the Raiders are willing to do business and even accept a trade. It's going to be Ayuk in a first, Ayuk in a second, and a second next year. You're not going to be a one-for-one or Ayuk and Devontae. It's not going to happen. And if it does, then what the heck's going on? <laughs> like, someone it has a screw loose somewhere that, that happens. And I'll be the Raiders if that's the case. But again, San Francisco has told us the entire offseason they want to pay Brandon Ayuk. That they have not just budgeted for this, but they want to pay him. They want to reward him. Ayuk has said multiple times, I want to be a 49er. I'm for sure going to be a 49er. If I'm not, 
a commander or a stealer. Those are my two and third options. I want to be a Niner as my number one option. Ayuk is in the building, willing to and has already come to that table to put things aside. The Niners, not that they haven't been able or willing to negotiate, just seems like that they're at a point where it's like, you didn't take our first offer, which in our opinion was our best offer, so go pound salt. See what you're actually worth out there. Which isn't the best way to do negotiations, but it could be the most effective way, right? Um, but the way that they talked all offseason, it's not like these two parties don't want to be together. It's not like they're dissing each other. Shanahan said yesterday and even today on Sirius XM, losing Brandon's going to be a big deal. And unfortunately, it's not like Kyle has much of a say in regards to negotiations or what Brandon Ayuk actually wants. But the rumor mill, while yes, there's Devontae and three-team trades and all that stuff, it, this all comes back to, I think, ultimately, while yes, a trade could still happen, probably will happen. But Compared to two days ago, where it's probably like 85% going to happen, I think today it's much more around 65%. I think if these two parties came to the table, sat down, put offers out there, put the paperwork out there via email, I think there'd be a deal done a lot sooner than we think it would be. San Francisco, from what we've seen so far, has had enough. Ayuk's like, okay, like fine. We'll see what else is out there for me. And again, I've already said this beforehand, but it's like, again, a, a young child that <laughs> is threatening to move out. Okay, move, leave. Fine, see what else is out there for you. But eventually you'll come back home because you know you have a warm bed, you're going to have hot food, three meals a day, people that love you, a system that fits you here. Here. That's Brandon Ayuk. Now, will that happen? God, I hope so. I do not want to trade Brandon Ayuk. And I think with what the Niners currently have on the table, or at least what we think have on the table, it's not like they have many options. It's not like they're going to be going to 32 teams. This is maybe, maybe a two-team race for Brandon Ayuk. And again, maybe a three-team race, but that third team is like, nah, I'm not sure. I don't think it's the Raiders. I don't think other teams in August are willing to part ways with their stars. And that's not going to it's not going to sit well with San Francisco. And I think when it's all said and done, whether it's this week, today, tomorrow, whenever a resolution happens, I don't think it's going to be Ayuk wearing the you know, black and yellow the crimson and yellow of the commanders, the silver and black of the Raiders. I think it'll be him wearing the red and gold, whether it is a reworked fifth year option, whether it is a contract extension or whether it's just the actual fifth year option. Every day that passes, it feels like nothing is actually going to happen. And well, yes, again, there are pros and cons. Everything you hear out there, there could be validity to it. I think the Cortland Sutton stuff could make some sense. Uh, you're not getting pits and picks from the Falcons, <laughs> um, which would be cool, but it wouldn't happen. Although it would be just crazy to think about with Kyle Shanahan's offense. Um, it'd make Sean McVay crap himself, um, which they could have had that in 2021, but... Trey Lance, you know. Um, I just think, could San Francisco let their second best first round pick in the Shanahan era walk out without a new contract? Leaving just Nick Bosa as the only first round pick in this regime's history to have a second contract? If there's ever a 49er, mainly a receiver, that deserves to get paid for a consistent line of work. 
in a Shanahan offense, is it not Brandon Ayuk? I don't think there's necessarily a bad guy here. I'm not anti Ayuk. I think San Francisco could have done more to get this over with. I think, you know, when you hear, and I have no idea if this is accurate or not, but you have to believe the sourcing, it's Mike Silver, and he's one of the most in tune people, and Matt Mayoko. That when you hear a report they haven't actually put an offer on the table for months, that's disheartening. That's annoying. It's frustrating to go, we didn't need to be here. We didn't have to get here. Yet we are. Yet we are. And and so ultimately, you know, three team trades, Devontae Adams, Cortland Sutton. I don't really think all that's gonna happen. I don't think all that is true. I don't think Devontae Adams is going to be a Niner. I don't think, you know, I don't think a team like San Francisco, well, yes, they traded T.O. a long time ago, and it's very similar to that, where they had a deal in place to send Terrell Owens to the Ravens. He said, no, I'm not going to play there. Then they had to get the NFLPA involved, then he reverted back to San Francisco, then he went to the Philadelphia Eagles, and history is history, but that was different. T.O. won it out. He was done. When has Ayuk ever said, shown, he wants out? Even his trade request was laughed at. And look, maybe in hindsight, we can look at what he's done, the negotiation tactics uh, that he's had. And at the time, we laughed at them and said they weren't working. Maybe we were wrong. Now, I don't think they've actually worked in his favor because if it did work in his favor, he'd already be signed because he wants to be here. I think you have two people that want the same thing but can't come to a compromise on getting to that same thing. You know, it's like... It's 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 almost like trying to have Thanksgiving with your in-laws or put two families together where my wife's family for Thanksgiving, they have tamales on one day i'm a turkey guy i was born on thanksgiving it, 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 it's it's my day i want the mashed potatoes the sweet potatoes the big turkey the salads my kind of pies and obviously it's not my day but again my wife is like we well we do tamales i'm like i don't want no freaking tamales babe i want turkey i'm finna eat a turkey leg and sit there with the toxins in my stomach and put my hand in my pants and watch football all day. I don't want tamales. I don't want to unwrap my food on Thanksgiving. Tamales are great, but I don't want to unwrap my food on Thanksgiving. I want to eat the turkey, just pull a leg off and let's start chomping. I want to have turkey sandwiches for days afterwards. You got to come to a compromise. The Niners and Nayuk want the same thing. The question is, can they actually compromise? To get there. Ayuk wants tamales. Ayuk wants more money and more targets. And San Francisco's like, well, we can give you this amount. We can give you $26 million, which is kind of what you want. It's almost like going back to Thanksgiving. My wife's saying, you want a Cornish game hen? You can have your own turkey. It's not the same thing. Not the same thing, babe. (laughs) But ultimately, I think that this thing gets worked out. And you're right, James. Receivers in Pittsburgh got called out for not blocking. Hence why, hence why I don't think what they have to offer in regards to receivers. Looking at you, Calvin Austin III. San Francisco is not going to want that. They're not going to want... And and here's the thing. While Pittsburgh may say no to George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth, I don't even think... San Francisco would want George Pickens. And Tyrone, this gets to your question, what's the holdup? What the holdup is, is San Francisco is like, look, Ayuk, we don't want to trade you. Pittsburgh is not giving us enough to shake their hand and say, yep, we're done. They can give you what you want, sure. They're not giving us what we want. So what they're doing is, is they're, okay, Pittsburgh can give Ayuk what he likes, the money, the fit, the culture, fine. If that's where he needs to be, we can do that. But we need to find somebody else that can give us what we want. 
that's what's taking place currently. That it's San Francisco telling Ayuk, cool, you can go to Pittsburgh, fine. But we're not going to do that until we can find a team that has what we want, what we like, what fits us, what fits the return necessary for a player like yourself. So, like I've already said a handful of times here, Tyrone, I'm sure you missed it, which is fine. San Francisco is actively on the trade market, asking teams, calling teams, scouring the trade market to see what other team is willing to give, willing to give them a receiver close to or equal value of Brandon Ayuk back. And not even a receiver, mind you, a positional player of equal to value. The issue is, what other position outside of receiver does San Francisco need? A linebacker? Who's trading linebackers? Which team has three linebackers to give? Not many, if any at all. Safety? You just signed Tracy Walker. You're not getting Minka. You're not getting Justin Simmons. Hufunga's coming back eventually. What team is trading a starting right tackle in August? What team has a plethora of offensive linemen to trade? None. None. Like, you're not getting Fontenot or, or Patrick Queen in a fourth for BA. There's, like, you can ask for that, and that's fine. They're going to laugh at you. And it's not because what you're asking for isn't, a, isn't, isn't equal value or more to Ayuk. It's because they're saying we don't want to part with that. That's the difference here. You can ask for equal value. Teams don't want to give you equal value. <laughs> they want to give you less and less and less, which is why in every trade, usually, whether it's NBA or NFL or the MLB, some team has to compromise. It's like in the MLB, when you're trading at the trade deadline, you may want three top 10 prospects and a current player that can start for you. The other team is like, look, we'll give you a, our number two prospect, a top 15 guy, and a depth third baseman. That might be something you can turn into. Someone's got to come to a compromise and go, okay, uh, my market value isn't as high as you thought it was. What Ayuk is actually worth is not going to be his market value in August. Because the team knows, great, we got to trade this guy for picks, which in one year's time are going to be devalued for sure. But also... Now we got to resign this kid. Pittsburgh's not going to give you two first round draft picks, and I wouldn't be shocked if they weren't offering a second and a fifth and like a seventh, or a second and a fifth and Calvin Austin the third, or a second and a fifth and James Daniel. What we know Ayuk is worth to us is not what he's worth to somebody else. It'd be different if it'd be different if he was already signed to a contract, which is not, which is not. Yes, fifth your option. Yes, franchise tag, sure. But even then, San Francisco, if Ayuk, let's say, plays out this year, if he really wants out again, you franchise that sucker and trade next offseason and get back what you actually believe he's worth. Like, weirdly enough, through all of this, Ayuk can get what he wants in a year if it means he actually wants out. But all this stuff you hear, like... The straight line, honest to God answer is, Ayuk's probably going to be a Niner. Ayuk's probably going to play on the fifth year option. And in one year's time, Ayuk might get traded. That's like the, yep, that's the lane right there. But that, that is a straight path to both sides getting exactly what they want. Maybe that means Ayuk's entire fifth year option is guaranteed for a year. Maybe it means, you know, renegotiating that fifth year option, eliminating the franchise tag entirely, which you can do. I believe you can do that. So uh, the trade rumors out there, the rumor mill, Cortland Sutton, three-team trade NBA style. I, I, I really don't believe a three-team trade is going to happen. If anything, if there is a trade at all, it will be Ayuk to Team A for picks and whatever, and then San Francisco in a separate trade then making, you know, going getting a receiver or or an edge rusher or whatever it might be. It's not going to be this NBA style, you know, Rockets and and the Mavericks and the Warriors involved in a three team trade. It's not going to happen. That's not likely. The NFL doesn't do that. It's so much harder 
in the NFL to do that. NFL teams would much rather trade you a star receiver and three first-round draft picks than do a three-team trade. It complicates everything. There's three different sour caps that get involved here. There's parts moving all, all over the place. Like, the NBA is really the only, you know, three-team trade place. The MLB, more likely, but the NFL, no, no. Um, I mean, I mean, well, man, man. Uh, but ultimately, like, what do you think is going to happen? Is this Ayuk going to be back in San Francisco? Do you think he's still getting traded? Because as of right now, it's, we are exactly where we were or are today with where we left off two days ago. Oh, a trade might get done. It's almost done. It's nearing done. There's a package in place, but all the sides can't agree. And every day that passes, the firm grip that was, you know, we're near a trade, seems to get looser and looser and looser. And once that grip goes, Ayuk's in San Francisco, at Levi Stadium, John and Parag come to the table, Ayuk and his agent come to the table, and well, yes, there are rumors out there that San Francisco is looking for receivers if they have to trade Ayuk. If it gets to a point, they have to move him. But even right now, even right now, the Niners, just like two days ago, just like during the draft, don't have to do anything. Anything. So the holdup is San Francisco is looking for a trade partner to give them a receiver equal to or close to value. Right now, they can't find anybody. It's all hearsay. It's a hope so. And, and there is no promise someone's willing to actually play a game with them. The Broncos could say no. We don't want to do that. Which, okay. Which knocks off another possible outcome, scenario where Ayuk gets traded. If you are a Niner fan and you want Ayuk back, you're hoping no team is willing to play with San Francisco and no team ponies up, ponies up, because if he does, or, or if they do, Ayuk's gone. But if they don't, Ayuk's a Niner. And I think that is the best... Like, If you're a fan, you're almost praying nobody gives San Francisco what they want. Because if they do, he's gone. If they don't, he's going to be a Niner. So I know we're all kind of sitting on the edge, biting our nails, waiting to see what happens. And no, they don't. Not at all. <laughs> No, no, they don't. <laughs> but we're just waiting. Waiting and waiting and waiting. And the longer you wait... I've been told this. Not sure if it's true. Time heals all wounds. You were hurt in high school? Well, I mean, come on. I'm 27 now, going on 28. I don't care what happened a decade ago. You know what heals all wounds in, 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 in the NFL? Money. Money. Money equals respect. And winning. And San Francisco can give Ayuk, and is arguably the only team that can give Ayuk what he wants. The Broncos can't do it. The Jets can't do it. The Steelers can't do it. San Francisco was the only team that can give him what he wants. Money and winning. Money and winning. Money and winning. Let's answer this, though. From W. Travis. If Brandon Ayuk gets traded this week, where do you think it'll be? Pittsburgh. It'll be Pittsburgh. I think the most likely trade scenario is Ayuk gets Pittsburgh, San Francisco either flips part of it or all of it for a receiver elsewhere. Maybe Cortland Sutton, maybe somebody else I haven't mentioned just yet, but it doesn't seem like they have this large pool of teams to pick from. People usually don't make gigantic trades in August. But if Ayuk is traded, it'll likely be to Pittsburgh. Likely. This year, though, Chris Herrera, BA's a dime a dozen, make him stay and sit on the bench. You can do that, but he's not dime a dozen. He's not dime a dozen. Not at all. Ron Navy? Great profile pick, by the way. <laughs> Says, Ayuk is gone, but keep dreaming. Well, he's still here. 
And according to many reports out there, the deal was done three days ago. So uh, I'm going to keep dreaming because nothing's happened so far. Could it? Sure. Has it? Nope. And the longer you wait, the less it's likely. Tyrone Johnson says, the owners have plenty of money. Surprise, the Steelers won him because the Rooney's pinch a penny. So tight, the heads and tails are on the side. Well, right now, so are the Niners. <laughs> Niners are arguably one of the toughest negotiators in football. Toughest negotiators in football. And that's why we're here. You better hope San Francisco, if you want to keep by you, can find nobody, nobody to play their game. I don't think they will. Not Pittsburgh. No one's going to give them what they want. Not a single team. And the great thing is that means he'll be back in San Francisco, which is the hope. But if not, like Pastor Jay says here, you're not getting CeeDee Lamb. You're not getting Devontae. How great would it be to get CeeDee Lamb, who wants more money than Ayuk does, by the way. The only way you're trading CD is if you're getting rid of Debo, because they do very similar things. But even then, I mean, CD is great, man. I, I I am boomer sooner till I die, but man, man. Um, you're right, James. I'll be at very different scenarios. Yes, we thought Jimmy was gone. They were going to trade him. And I was there during that training camp. It was weird. It was really, really weird. Uh, the entire team's on one side, and Jimmy's like, eh. It's like, what's going on? He's throwing to the towel boy, trying to get ready for the NFL season. It was weird. It was really weird. But hey, you're right. Uh, and again, like, San Francisco moving off of Jimmy, albeit didn't actually happen, made justifiable sense if I ask you this, does the Niners moving off of Brandon Ayuk make justifiable sense? Honestly, you want to win now? You don't trade your best receiver. You don't trade your leading target getter. In August, maybe pre-draft, the Buckner way, right? You don't trade, like, like trading him makes no sense. He's your best receiver, leading target getter, your best separator, your best blocker as receiver, that's not Joan Jennings, your best outside receiver, <laughs> right? He is, he has the best chemistry with Brock Purdy. They are in tuned, intertwined in the mind, it feels like. And Shanahan and the Niners would be a fool to do this. This would look terrible, terrible. Not that it matters much, and I'm not sure how much it actually would impact future negotiations, but if Ayuk wins this, you just gave everybody that has the leverage he does, which isn't much, but still. Like, you're giving other players the blueprint. The fact that Shanahan got so angry, according to Mike Silver, they rubbed him the wrong way, that Ayuk held in, and his bro hug bothered him how fragile of an ego do you have to have and i love kyle he's a great coach if a bro hug bothers you you must have hated playing at texas in college where every dude in the locker room was bro hugging your ass i mean come on dude like what are we doing I mean, man and kyle wants to keep iuk but he's bothered by what he did interesting it just, like, doesn't, doesn't make sense. Does it make sense? It just, like, on the trajectory and the path San Francisco's on, this would be, it wouldn't be like, go, you know, go to jail or return to start the Monopoly way, right? Don't pass, go. It would just be the biggest, like, put the brakes on, recalibrate. Because, what? Let's hypothetically say they trade Ayuk away and then get Cortland Sutton. Okay, fine. Fine, cool. I like Sutton. Is he Ayuk? No. But is it... Does it still make your offense formidable? Yes. Is it better than getting nothing? Yes. Getting Cortland Sutton would be better than just draft picks unless it's like you know, three first-round draft picks or two of them. That's fine. But even then, like... It's not... <laughs> 
It's just not like any move you make moving Ayuk or trading him away is making it better. So why not just swallow your pride, come to the table, and get a deal done? If Pittsburgh, according to the reports, is going to give him $28 million or around there, you can't muster up two extra million dollars. You can't give him a higher guaranteed, which doesn't go against the cap. It comes out of York's pocket. The York's got money. He wants guaranteed money. Give him the extra $2 million. And I want to dispel this report or the thought of, well, they can't pay everybody. They don't have to, first off. But you know who you pay? Guys like Ayuk. You don't have to pay Mooney Ward. You can lose cornerbacks. Plenty of teams don't pay cornerbacks. You don't technically have to pay Ufunga. You can let Greenlaw walk if he's too injured. It's not like, one, they don't have the money because they do. But the cap's going to go up each year. Yeah, you got to pay Brock Purdy and you got to pay Trent Williams. The odds are, in the way San Francisco does things, Purdy's contract is not going to kick in until two years down the road. So, yes, you got to pay Brock Purdy. Yeah, that's true. But it's not going to you know, escalate to record-breaking numbers until year three of that deal. So, yeah, you got to pay guys. Trent could want money, then retire in a year. Then guess what? You get the money back. It's off the books. Like, they're also going to get money back when guys like Trey Lance and other guys are off the books as well. And yes, they can also trade Elijah Mitchell and, and Jordan Mason or whatever else. You get my point. It's not like signing IU damns them to cap casualty hell and they become the Saints where they're moving guys' money and kicking that can $20, $30 million down the road. It's not like it puts them in cap hell forever. Forever. It simply just makes it a little tougher. And even then, it's not like San Francisco hasn't been in worst cap position before. They were paying D Ford until last year, and he hasn't played in two or three seasons. And it wasn't like a million dollars. It was like $5 million. Now look, do you need two receivers? Maybe not. Maybe not. But what did Kyle Shanahan just say on the Tim Kawakami podcast a week and a half ago? I like offensive weapons. You can't get the offensive linemen. You get weapons. They help you score. But you're going to trade your best receiver? What they're saying and what they're doing don't really line up. And you're right, E2K. It is annoying. But your first part should say, seriously, don't trade him. Resign him. All these reports and rumors, well, yes, there is some truth to them. It's just like, Nothing's actually happening. Everything that's happening now was the same thing happening in the draft, pre-draft. San Francisco was fielding calls, seeing if a deal would work for them. Nothing panned out, so they kept him. Yes, there's more pressure on them now. Yes, preseason week one is in two days. I get that. But what's the difference now than then? San Francisco was fielding calls, seeing if a trade is going to work. No trade has worked so far because no team is willing to give them what they want. Oh, it sounds like how it was in April. What was the outcome then? What was the outcome then? They kept him. Why would that not be the same outcome now? And Anthony, you're right. It's a great question to ask. Who would be the receiver to if Ayuk leaves? I asked Mike Silver this. He said Ricky Pearsall. Now, you know me. I like Ricky Pearsall a lot. He can be great. But year one Pearsall? I'm not too sure. Does he has does he have the makeup? Yeah. Does he have the skill set? Sure. But one he's hurt currently, although not too seriously, but he is injured. And it's like, come on. Come on. And you're right, E2K, you're right. San Francisco was offered the 30, fourth overall pick, and said no. So why would they say yes now for bargain bin trade offers? They said no then, which in my opinion was smart. And to me, 
well, yes, a trade could still happen, and to some, even myself, it seems more likely than not, albeit it goes down each day. Why would they say yes for less? Like, it's not like San Francisco is the Colorado Rockies who were like, we're not going to trade Nolan Arenado. We're going to get a qualifying offer. And when we do that and he signs elsewhere, man, you know, we're going to get a draft pick. We're not going to trade Trevor Story. We're going to put a qualifying offer out when he doesn't sign with us. We'll get a draft pick. And then they don't put a qualifying offer out and then they'll get a draft pick. San Francisco may be hard negotiators. They're not stupid. You can you can discuss trading Buckner, cutting Armstead, re-signing Jimmy to a massive contract and their draft process of Ty Davis Price and Trey Lance. Even then, they knew we have to maximize trading Trey Lance. We have Brock Purdy. Let's maximize trading Trey. It's not like they're stupid. Yes, it can be frustrating sometimes. It's not like they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> now, it can be questionable, and I agree, but they're not dumb. So, to me, this just feels like like Albert Breer said earlier. And, and, and James, you're right. Isn't this up to San Francisco anyways? Exactly. Ayuk can find a $37 million offer from, you know, some team in butt-tucky for all I care. doesn't matter. San Francisco could simply just say, no, no. And guess what? Ayuk goes, oh man, okay. On to the next team. It literally, like, does not matter what a team offers Ayuk. If they do not give the Niners what they want... Ayuk is stuck unless San Francisco caves, which they said no in April. They really haven't negotiated for the last three months. Why would they say, we'll cave now? It doesn't feel like San Francisco. So again, could a trade happen? Yes. It could happen right now. And no, E2K is not the worst front office in football. A lot of draft misses, for sure, but... Purdy, acquiring McCaffrey, acquiring Trent Taylor, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, DJ Jones, Hufunga. Uh, hopefully this year's class is hit, and they've... I mean, come on. Come on. Come on. Pastor Jay says, San Francisco wants George Pickens and Muth. They're off the table. I don't even think San Francisco wants George Pickens. Friar Muth different. Okay. That's fine. I don't even think they want Pickens. Would you want Pickens? You think Shanahan, who may be the biggest hard ass on receivers, ain't going to put that dude in the doghouse so fast? I mean, Ayuk was in the doghouse, and he's Shanahan's golden boy. You think he's not going to put Pickens out there? Pickens will get targeted three times in a game, throw his helmet, break the Gatorade bottle, and punch a wall and break his hand. And it's like, we, Shanahan's like, what is going on? <laughs> no. No. And that's not why it's in a standstill. No. It's not why they're in a standstill. They're in a standstill because the Steelers only want to give up picks, and the players they're willing to give up is not, like, San Francisco likely asked for Fryermuth, likely asked for Alex Highsmith, Maybe ask for Fitzpatrick. Pickens does not fit this system at all. At all. That's not why this thing's held up. This thing is held up because San Francisco wants the receiver back and the Steelers don't have a receiver San Francisco wants. That's why it's being held up. That's why it's being held up. They can't afford Pickens. They can afford Ayuk, and Ayuk's going to make more money than Pickens will, so I think they can. Um... It just feels like the way things are going, and I think you're talking about the Anjo Filipponi report, not the best source in the world, Pastor Jay. And look, all the respect to you, you're probably a great person. If you're getting your sourcing from Andrew Filipponi, he's wrong a lot. Could be right here, wrong a lot. Go back through his Twitter, a lot. Um... Ron Navy says, players already mad at the situation, so yes, you can keep Ayuk, 
and the toxicity it will cause in the locker room, and any Super Bowl run you think won't happen. So this is... Like, where is the idea there's toxicity, though? Who's mad about this? If anything, it would make me more upset if they traded him. It only makes your team worse. It only doesn't close your window, but it certainly makes it thinner to fit through. And you have aging vets. Fred's getting older. Juszczyk's getting older. Trent's getting older. You don't think those guys wouldn't be frustrated losing one of their premier players in a time where Trent could be gone in one year? So it, it, the idea there is toxicity, I don't think is accurate. I think trading him would be worse. Yes, Debo might say, you know, business is business. But he also said it's weird not being out there with him. Okay, well, what's worse? Trading him away, frustrating your locker room, sending you guys back a year or two because you created your best receiver, or keeping him for a year, at the, at the least, if not negotiating a new deal, and keeping your window open, making him happy, winning games. Winning fixes literally everything. And if he's not happy in a year time, trade him away. Um, if they sign Ayuk, they'll lose Greenlaw. When Purdy signs, they'll lose any free agents during that time. It's not true. I already said that. They can lose Greenlaw, sure. May never be the same. They can not re-sign Hufunga. They have Jair Brown, they have Mustafa. If he hits Hufunga who? And I don't want to, you know, talk poorly about these players, just that Hufunga torn ACL, Greenlaw torn Achilles. You don't have to re-sign them anyways. And if they aren't the same player, they're not even worth re-signing anyways. So, like, sure... You can let Mooney Ward walk. You can let a lot of players walk. They also have enough money. They could save money by extending Brandon Ayuk. They will save money like they did with Christian McCaffrey when they paid Trent Williams more money. Like, come on. Donnie Boyd says you can't force someone to be there where they don't want to be week one my back hurts week two my knee hurts yes could he fake an injury sure that's but it's not like the medical team wouldn't wouldn't test him the nfl pa can get involved like there could be a whole issue there and again you hold out for week nine the season doesn't count so like how 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 much are you willing to play this game really again San Francisco is telling Ayuk, it's either here or there. But right now, nobody's doing enough for us to trade you away. So currently, it's just here. So let's get back to the table. Ron Navy said, uh, CMC already came out and called him an ex-teammate. Are you going to make too much of what a player said on a live interview on NFL Network? I mean, could it be something? Sure. Um, it, they want him gone. It means more targets for other big guys. That's not true. We have no idea if that's true. And if they and if they really wanted him gone, what other big guys are they going to target? CMC had, I think, the most or the second most carries in the entire league last year. It, 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 it's like, okay, Debo gets a lot of touches already. In fact, he gets hurt because he gets so many touches in the way he plays. Juwan's not asking for more. The, like Jennings isn't asking for the ball more. Pearsall's new, Cowling's new, Grendo's new. If Mitchell and Jordan Mason complain about not getting the ball enough, goodbye. It's not like they have to really force feed the ball to somebody. That's not what this is. And you're right, Jason. If he fakes an injury, what are other teams going to think? Oh, he's a diva. I don't want that in my locker room. Yikes. Yikes. I don't, I don't want that here. It's like, and and also, like, right, Papa J, CMC was talking about dealing with the similar situation in the past. You're right. CMC was in Carolina for a long time. That was a bad front office. Traded away a lot of people. A lot of negotiations. Cam Newton, one of the bigger ones, right? It's not like, and if you don't just take, oh, CMC called him a 
former teammate. It's not like he wasn't, like, he was referring to his former teammates, not Ayuk, former teammate. Or at least that's how I took it. Because Ayuk is currently a teammate, and for what it's worth, still, still, still on the depth chart <laughs> as a starter, if that matters at all. But again, there really is nothing new happening. It's all hearsay, and as of right now, for as fun as it is to, to, to play the game, to dive into what's possible, what could happen, you know, what's not going to happen, what have you heard that has changed your mind? Because everything, as you get breaking news right now, the Niners have placed defensive end Drake Jackson on the reserve pup list, which ends any chance of a return in 2024 per the old Yates. So Drake Jackson's season's over with, hence why I do believe if there is another position San Francisco is eyeing, if they're going to trade Ayuk, it is edge rusher. You are now very thin. It's Bosa, Leonard Floyd, Gross Matos, Austin Bryant, Alex Barrett, and Robert Beal Jr. If you're going to trade Ayuk, you may want to look for an edge rusher. And if I was the Pittsburgh Steelers and I really wanted Brandon Ayuk, here's Alex Highsmith. I think that would actually get something of a deal done. That may be the one defensive player out there on a team that can afford to lose him that could get a deal done. I really believe that. But again, Pittsburgh has to play ball. It doesn't seem like they want to get rid of any edge rushers. And I totally get that. I totally get that. Again, teams usually don't want to get rid of their own stars, their own players, in August. Papa J asks here, Sterling, how about trying to pick up a veteran cornerback? Let's talk about cornerback for a second. Who's out there? San Francisco is more likely to trade, or excuse me, San Francisco is more likely to re-sign Jason Verrett than trade for a cornerback. <laughs> Because there's nobody out there. There's nobody out there. You're not getting Patrick Sertan. The Broncos are going to ask for Ayuk and more for Sertan, which makes sense. You already have Mooney Ward, Lenore, Isaac Gatum. Behind them, you have Ambry Thomas, Samuel Womack, Daryl Luter, Bernardo Green, Rocky Sin. And some of those guys aren't very good. But man, yes, what I love Patrick Sertan. Did San Francisco check in on Patrick Sertan last year? Yes, Jalen Johnson as well. Yes, there is no indication, no indication that the Broncos and the Bears would part ways with any of those people. And even then, you can argue San Francisco really doesn't need a cornerback, and it might be their deepest cornerback room uh, to date under Kyle Shanahan. Pastor Jay says, Niners are desperate. They messed up the deal. Now you have to find a third team. Well, how are they desperate? How are they desperate? What are they desperate to do exactly? They don't have to trade Ayuk. They don't need the draft picks. They can just sit here and wait. Or what they should do is negotiate a new deal. That makes the most sense. E2K says here, NFL rarely trades these players for players. You're right. It's very, very rare. Usually it's draft picks. It's like baseball. You want to trade a big player? You want prospects back because you want to get those guys in your system, into your farm system, your coaches, train those guys up. Similar thing for the NFL. You want to trade a star away? You want draft picks to pick your guys, to get your players that you want. Um, Ron Navy, I, I disagree. <laughs> I think Alex Highsmith is one of the better number two edge rushers in football. Um, and you can look at his stats. Yes, it's helped with TJ Watt being there. It's going to help with Nick Bosa being there. It's just the way it goes. Um, Matt B says, Niners control everything, and Ayuk will perform for a contract. Uh, they control a lot, definitely in contract negotiations, and they, can, they have the ultimate say of yes or no in trading him. But they're not desperate at all. James, you're right. They're not desperate. San Francisco is far from desperate. This is not T.O. in 2003. With the Niners, they don't have to trade Ayuk at all. In fact, I, I would ultimately believe Ayuk would come back. 
if they made him a right deal. And if this is the deal in place, James Daniels and Calvin Austin, it's been out there for a long time. It might be, the Steelers might be willing to part ways with more players than one star player. And in that, San Francisco would laugh it off and say, sorry, Ayuk, you're stuck. They don't want a potential guard on the team, which they have Burford, who's hurt, mind you, but is back by week one. Dominic Pooney stepped up. Feliciano's there. Aaron Banks is there. What are they going to do with a fifth offensive lineman at guard, especially? It doesn't do anything for you. Patrick Queen? They just signed him to a big deal in Pittsburgh. Why would you? Why would they trade him? That's what I'm saying. Like, n- doesn't make sense. What Ayuk is worth, no team is going to offer you equal value to. He's better off staying in San Francisco and ultimately just come to the table. Come to the table. Man. Pastor Jay says here he wants to be a Niner and he wants his money but they need to put their pride and ego to the side. He's the reason why y'all made the Super Bowl. He's one of the reasons for sure, and I agree with everything he just said. He wants to be here. We want him here. Sit down and compromise. Sit down and compromise. Uh, Papa J says, Sterling, would you say that if B.A. gets traded and Debo gets injured, would this be the biggest test for Brock Purdy? And if so, do you think he is capable to prove everyone wrong? I don't think he has to prove anything to anybody, but yes, it would by far be his biggest test. You have a receiver number three as your one, a rookie first round pick as your two at that point, assuming Pearsall is healthy. Then you have a mixture of Conley and Ronnie Bell and Trent Taylor and Cowing likely as a receiver or Robbie Chosen Anderson as your receiver three. Um, It'd be his biggest test. It depends on who they play. It really depends on who they play. Because if they're playing the Cardinals, should win that game. <laughs> but if you're playing Kansas City or you're playing, you know, a tough defense like the Browns, different story now. You don't play Cleveland this year. But if you're playing Green Bay in the frozen tundra in December, different story. But if you're playing a bad team, then you can definitely win that. But even then, you still have McCaffrey. <laughs> still have Kittle. It's not like there wouldn't be a path to win, but yes, it'd be his biggest test. And yes, I do think he would pass depending on the opponent. The assumption would be that's probably later in the year, or at least middle of the season, weeks about 6 through 10. At that point, probably not. (laughs) He probably wouldn't pass that, but I don't think it would matter. I don't think Josh Allen passes that test. I don't think Mahomes probably would because he's Mahomes. But there's not many quarterbacks that pass that test. Lamar Jackson probably could because of the skill set he has on the ground. Whereas Purdy, for as fast as he is and quick as he is, probably not going to pass that test. Um, w. Travis says, do you think IU could get traded sometimes this week? Yeah, I do. I-, I truly believe that. But ultimately, again, every day that goes by, it's going to happen less and less and less and less. Ernie Chavez 95.7 Doobie says, Super Chat, thank you so much, Ernie. I really, really appreciate it. Um, keep grinding, Sterling. Great coverage. Thank you so much, Ernie, uh, for being in here. Uh, thank you so much for the Super Chat. I really, really appreciate it. Hope you're having a wonderful, what is it, Wednesday now? Is it Thursday? It's Thursday. Wonderful Thursday uh, afternoon. And James uh, Dernal says, Trent Taylor is better than Robbie Chosen Anderson kind of think everybody's better than Robbie Chosen Anderson. He's just not very good. Not very good. Uh, Matt B says, teams don't want to bring Iuke in without training camp. You're right, which is why I think if a deal's gonna get done, it'll happen prior to week one, likely before week three of the preseason. Um, but ultimately, I, I have a hard time believing. Hard time believing things truly get done. Um, it doesn't feel like doesn't feel like a trade's going to happen. It could. But I, just, I just don't think something's going to happen. Pastor Jay says, if you give us Ayuk, Steelers will win. <laughs> Goodness. 
Steelers will win the Super Bowl. Guaranteed. My NFC Championship game is San Francisco and Philadelphia. AFC Casey Pitt. Um, I don't think Brandon Ayuk is setting any team over the top. I'll just say that. And I, and I like Ayuk. He's going to help you win. I don't think Ayuk is going to be any team's determining factor in winning a Super Bowl. Good player. Really good player. But man. Man. I, I, I really just don't. <laughs> man. You, you got to figure out quarterback first, man, before Pittsburgh even sniffs winning a wild card game. I'll just say that. Could it happen? Could Fields blossom? Sure. But just, just no. Just no. Uh, just no. Uh, but right now, at 2 o'clock on the West Coast in Southern California, uh, Ayuk is still a Niner. And I believe, again, every day that goes by, he's likely still going to be a Niner. <laughs> but, uh, man. Uh, Jason R. says, Here, any insight on the three teams involved that I'm seeing with a possible deal involving Brandon Ayuk. This kind of started off the show, Jason. Um, we don't truly know exactly. So the only speculation is that it's Pittsburgh, the Niners, and potentially the Broncos. Um, you have to kind of erase the Browns and erase New England since Ayuk vetoed trades there. Does it really seem like Washington wants to play ball? Again, pure speculation, but the insight would be probably the Broncos and Cortland Sutton maybe being on the table, but nothing seems certain. Um, I know, I think uh, it was Brian Peacock said that you know, it makes sense, three-team trade, but we do know this, Jason, that San Francisco... Uh, is scouring the receiver market looking for a receiver, trying to get a replacement for Ayuk if they have to make a deal. Uh, E2K says, wait, Ayuk vetoed a trade to the Browns. Um, he said no to the Patriots, despite getting offered $32 million per year, and it's my understanding that he did veto a trade to Cleveland because apparently he has beef with somebody there and doesn't want to play in Ohio. That's kind of the, I mean, if you're from Cleveland, I'm sorry. I don't know who truly wants to go to Cleveland to play, but they're a fine team. They're a good team. Great defense out there. But yes, that's my understanding that he did veto a trade to Cleveland, leaving a team like Pittsburgh as the primary and somewhat sole option if he wants to get traded. Um, but again, that's where things stand. Could be a three-team trade. Could be, you know, could be a two-team trade. San Francisco and somebody else. But as of right now, Brandon Ayuk is a Niner. Each passing day, it looks like he'll still be a Niner. And as the days progress and go by, it feels like the rumors and reports are going to get crazier and wilder. You're going to hear crazier names, Devontae Adams, Cortland Sutton. They're fun to discuss and get into, and one of them seems more plausible than the other, but nothing truly sticking outside of the Niners can say yes or no to Pittsburgh's offer, and whatever Pittsburgh is offered has not been good enough for San Francisco just yet. It's 2 o'clock on the West Coast. I gotta skedaddle out of here, but I want to thank you all so, so much uh, for watching and listening. If you could kindly leave a like on the show, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're listening on the audio platforms, Spotify and podcast, give us a five star review. I don't care what you put in the review itself. Give us five stars. It's the cheapest, freest, and easiest way to help the show out. Ernie, Matt B, Ripper, thank you so much in the comments. Papa J, Pastor J, E2K, whatever the heck your name is. Bobo, I'm sure you're in here somewhere. Tony Meredith, you guys are great. You're always here. Thank you so much. James Dernall, Ciao for now. You do the same as well. If you could kindly, though, before you leave, follow us on social media at 49ers underscore access is the Twitter. 49ers dot access is the Instagram. And if you want to see your team play this year, if you're a Steeler fan, you're a Bronco fan, you're a Raider fan, more importantly, if you're a Niner fan, 
Use our promo code 49ersaccess49, E-R-S-A-C-C-E-S-S at SeatGeek.com and save yourself $20 off your first purchase. Also want to give a brief shout out to our new partner, Sports Spider. If you're tired of searching multiple websites, Fox, ESPN, wherever else you look for sporting news, SportsSpider.com has you covered. They collect the latest articles, videos, podcasts from around the web and organize them by your favorite team. You're a Niner fan, you're a Steeler fan, you can find the latest news on your team at SportsSpider.com. Hit that link down below and check out SportsSpider.com. My name is Sterling Bennett, and as always, until next time, hopefully it's not talking about a Brandon Ayuk trade anytime soon, but stay tuned for my winners and losers of NFL training camp, and we have football in two days. Niners play on Saturday against the Titans. You're going to want to be here for that. Thank you so much for watching, listening, and as always, until next time, stay faithful.